This we all know is a standard factorial where we put an exclamation mark in front of a number, like 4 factorial equals 4 times, 3 times, 2 times 1, which is equal to 24, and any n factorial equals n times n minus 1, and so on times 2 times 1. But here's something fascinating. What would happen if we tried to calculate something like half factorial? Now hold on. How can we multiply 1 divided by 2 times? Hey, wait. What will come next? It doesn't make sense in our regular understanding, right? But have you ever wondered about exponents? Like 2 raised to the power 3 means 2 times, 2 times 2, which is 8. Just like how factorial is multiplying down whole numbers. But then we ask, what about 2 raised to the power 0 0.5? That's not 2 multiplied by itself half a time, right? And yet, we know that 2 raised to the power 0 0.5 means the square root of 2. And we don't feel that weird about it, right? And it gets even crazier when we see things like e raised to the power i times pi equals minus 1, the famous Euler's identity, like how on earth can multiplying something by itself an imaginary number of times Give us a real number. This is where we realize we need to go beyond the normal definition of factorial. What I am saying is that if we plot all the values of factorial for whole numbers, like 1 factorial, 2 factorial, 3 factorial, and so on, we get just dots at those points, nothing in between. But what if we want to smoothly connect those dots? like drawing a curve that passes through them. Now here's where one of the greatest mathematicians of all time, the legendary Euler, enters the story. Euler wanted to figure out a way to smooth out the curve, which has the following desirable properties. First of all, he wants the function f of x, with f of 1, to be equal to 1 which matches with the fact that 1 factorial is equal to 1. Also, it must satisfy f of x plus 1 equals x times f of x, which could be the perfect extension of the factorial. After experimenting and playing around with infinite products and integrals, Euler came up with a function that beautifully satisfied all of this, and that, later, came to be known as the gamma function. Oh, man. Euler was just on another level. Put x equals 1 and you get this integral which is super duper easy to solve, and its value is one. Now, if you put x as x plus one, you get gamma of x plus one as this, where this power of t will now be x plus one minus one, or simply x. Then if you apply integration by parts on this, I will not be going into the details, you will end up with gamma of x plus one equals x times gamma of x. This shows that the gamma function satisfies the recursive property just like the factorial, exactly what Euler wanted. For whole numbers, gamma of n plus 1 equals n factorial, but now it also works for fractions and many negative values as well. So if you want to find factorial of half, then simply put n equals half, and now you actually need to find the gamma function of half plus 1 or 3 divided by 2. Now, ready for the real magic? Put x as 3 over 2 inside this integral formula. We get integral 0 to infinity of t raised to 3 over 2 minus 1, or t raised to half times e raised to minus t. Now you know what? Let's use a variable u where t equals u squared. So 2 times u times du equals dt. Substitute both of them here to get this in terms of u. Now finally, if you use integral by parts on this one, you will end up with this expression, where this part is simply zero. And this is reduced to half of standard Gaussian integral, which is nothing but square root of pi. If you are wondering how we got this, I have already made a video on the same, and the link is in the description. So folks, there you have it. This is how Euler connected pi, square root, and half with factorials. By the way, 
This powerful idea of gamma function shows up in some of the most important places in science and engineering. It's used in probability theory, especially in the normal distribution or bell curve, in quantum physics to calculate energy levels and particle behavior, in statistics to find patterns in data, and even in machine learning and AI when modeling continuous processes. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Also, you can support my channel by joining our community and becoming a member. So good!